everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Cinematic Relief. Uh, I'm Thunder. I'm Lightning. And I'm Monsoon. Uh, and today, uh, we watched The Eternals, the new MCU movie starring uh, just a whole mess of people who have never been in the MCU before, which is uh, exciting. Uh, but yeah, we saw it when it came out. We saw it uh, a few weeks ago. At this point, um, but yeah, uh, who 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 should start? Um, you can start. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, I I really liked this movie. I I don't know. I I don't know what the general like everyone else you know besides the people on this podcast are feeling about it. Um, yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of. Uh talk about you know opinions yeah on this film i've noticed i've heard a lot of mixed opinions but um like some people are saying like oh this is even, <laughs> this is the worst mcu film like ever made and others are like just calm down like mm. it, it wasn't that bad i didn't or think it was, it was bad at all I, I i liked it a lot yeah. um i thought it was really enjoyable um yeah i i do have s- some complaints, which we'll probably get into later, um, but yeah, I liked it. I I I'm curious to see what happens next. I'm I'm sort of in the same boat that I was with when Guardians of the Galaxy came out. Like, I obviously liked Guardians of the Galaxy more than I like this movie. Uh, but mm-hmm. after Guardians of the Galaxy is over, you're sort of like, that was cool. That was an MCU movie though. So like, what? happens next you know one thing i'm realizing that the more mcu movies that i see this i i thought this one was kind of middle of the road personally okay and i think part of it is i can't see the bigger picture yet they've introduced all these op characters um and none of them really connect to the overarching story and when it gets like that, I kind of lose interest. It doesn't feel connected to me. I think that's like an issue I had with um, Black Panther or the first Doctor Strange movie, which obviously the more uh, content that comes out, the less I feel that way. But that's kind of where I feel with this one right now. It's like, that was cool. I don't know how it relates to anything. Right. It was okay. It's interesting you uh, lump Black Panther together with those those other ones because Black Panther was in Civil War before the Black Panther movie came out. Well, so Black Panther is the only one that I've kind of had this situation with continuing on from the first film because Black Panther still to me feels more like the king looking out for Wakanda more than a superhero trying to save the world mm-hmm. type type of thing. Yeah. And I still feel that way. I mean, obviously, things are going to change up for the second Black Panther movie. But that's kind of the vibe I was getting until you get to, like, um, Infinity War. And then, it, you know, it gets broader. Yeah. They are kind of, like, they are kind of, like, digging this hole for themselves and then, like, trying to, uh, like, through dialogue... uh, you know, tr- try and find their way out where like th- they they didn't waste any time asking and then answering the question, why haven't the Eternals been in anything else yet? If they've, if they've well, been, they, oh, sorry, yeah. They were like, you know, not supposed to interfere. Right. In uh, the fact that they weren't actual beings does explain how they weren't affected by the snap right um but yeah i don't know they're super op so it it'll it'll be interesting to see them interact with um i mean one of them's legit superman yeah Yeah. well he's dead now i think oh is he i think oh i um i was on comicbook.com and i actually read something that the writers confirmed that he is dead okay Sorry. Oh yeah, no worries. Yeah. I was kind of disappointed when I read that though, because I was hoping like for a whole redemption arc, 
from him like I, I could just see him like imprisoning himself in the sun but like yeah i think gonna... they i think they wanted oh, their yeah. i think they wanted the their icarus allegory so they like kind of like tried to shoehorn in a redemption arc like right there at the end yeah <laughs> of him just killing himself yeah but he didn't he didn't have to just fly into the sun like he could i don't know i was like <laughs> in my head when i saw that scene i was like oh my gosh like so like he's gonna be he's already immortal he's already like a immortal android so right. he's probably just gonna um banish himself into the sun where nobody can like bother him and, or and when no where nobody else can be hurt by his actions but i guess that's not gonna happen it it, it does nando v movie nando v movies posed a good question which is like do the other Eternals know that he did that? Because he just flew away. They didn't really, like, they didn't see him go yeah. into the sun. <laughs> they just saw him fly away. Right. I know that at the very end, like, when Sprite says, like, he's gone, isn't he? And then Cersei just nods. I guess that is what addresses it. But I'm not sure if, like, they think he's, he's like, just banished himself to somewhere. Like, it, they know he's, like, actually dead. Yeah. So. It is interesting because these, you bring up the fact that these characters are, like basically immortal, which they totally are. But in a in a in a movie where most of your main characters are immortal, you 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 need to find stakes somehow. And it seems mm-hmm. like these people can die, but only at the hands of other people like them. You right. know what I mean? Like I, I feel like. Yeah. I feel like no matter what happens next, I feel like the next end game, whatever that looks like, can't have an eternal in it. It's it's almost even pushing it that Captain Marvel is there, you know? Right. Just from a well, just Captain from a Captain Marvel was the one. No, just uh, just Go from ahead. a power, you know, a power uh level distribution aspect. Right. Captain Marvel was kind of the like the OP. Yeah. In Endgame. Like, yeah. It almost... See, nothing has hit me quite as hard as the Dead Army from uh, Return of the King. Oh, that's in, like, the cop-out? Yeah. <laughs> of, like, a cop-out. The The Eternals might might get there, though. They might reach that peak. But Do you know what I'm referring to, Anthony? Yeah, the fact that, like multiple main characters die in the Battle of Minas Tirith, and then right at the end, they're like, we brought back the army of the undead, and it's like a 14-second scene in between two shots, and then we cut away to Aragorn being crowned king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but here's the thing, like, just based on, like, what the, the ending portrayed, because, spoiler alert, er- Erishim gets the three remaining um, Eternals, or uh, who are living on Earth, and yeah. Like, just whisper away. Like I'll, I'm gonna see what your memories think of uh, of humanity, and I'll, I'll use them to judge them if they're worthy enough to live. I don't know if he would like, quote unquote, reprogram them into following his command again. So maybe like, in a later period, they might become enemies of the heroes. Oh, that might be um, interesting. I'd be down for that. I didn't but, even think of that. That would be that then, would be like, pretty cool. But then, like, of course, you still have the other Eternals who are out there looking for other Eternals. So maybe it'd be this group of Eternals versus the group that Erishim was the way. That would be, you know, you are uh, setting up a, a really good plot for the second Eternals movie, if that is ever a thing. That sounds really yeah. uh, cool to me. That sounds like the only way the Eternals can interact with other Avengers if they have other Eternals to fight. Right. Right. Yeah, if <laughs> there's no, th- there's no, how are we going to stop Dr. Doom? Oh, no, Kingpin took over New York if <laughs> an Eternal is there. Right. right. But also, here's the thing. The, the Shang-Chi post, um, post-credit post scene, or not, maybe not the, post, the post-credit, but like the after-credit scene, one of them, like, um, it's Wong and Katie and Shang-Chi, and also... Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel like analyzing the the ring, the Ten Rings. Yeah, I was in my head before I saw Eternals. I was thinking like, oh, this is this is a a reference to the Eternals because they're saying like, oh, this is this is material that hasn't even been seen on Earth on Earth or like even in um, Captain Marvel's 
sector of the galaxy. Right. So maybe there are tools that the, the, the regular heroes can use to fight the Eternals, like the rings. But mm. of course, this is all speculation. I also think we have to also consider, I think a lot of questions are going to be answered once the MCU is like fully opened up the multiverse and we see what that truly means. Um, I know one Marvel character that could face off against an Eternal. Yeah. It's Deadpool. Oh. Because <laughs> he breaks the fourth wall. No, no, because he can't die. Because he, uh, yeah. Um... Yeah, he he straight up can't, right? Like he'll he'll just yeah. like regenerate, regrow, or whatever. If you try, yeah. I I did some research into that a while back. I think if you destroy every atom that is Deadpool, he will die. Yeah, but if if you don't, then he will just keep regenerating. Yeah. Um, I will say, uh. If anyone ever again says, you know, why do we need the Flash on the Justice League if we have Superman? Because Superman's got super speed too. I'm going to send them a clip from this movie, the Eternals movie, where the Flash beat the ever-living fuck out of Superman. (laughs) Honestly, that was great. That was probably my uh my my favorite scene in the whole movie. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Why? I, I appreciate that the sorry. Oh no, you you go. I appreciate that the um the two Eternals who beat who beat up Icarus are one the the first deaf uh superhero in the MCU and two the first gay and also he's black. Mm. The first gay superhero was able to quote unquote clip his wings. Yeah. Yeah, Eternals yeah. is 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 nothing if not uh diverse. Like, yeah, yeah, diverse. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They've got mm-hmm. a lot of uh like you were saying, they've got a uh deaf superhero and I think the first openly gay one, right? Openly openly gay, yes. Um was i gonna say oh why does um why does marvel think that we care about uh kit harrington's character i just thought it was very weird that they chose the movie about characters no one's heard about to tease another character that no one's heard about i actually did some research into this um so in the comic books, uh, you know, I mean, in the movie, you know, uh, Cersei and Kit Her- uh, Dan- D- Dane Whitman, that's his Yeah. Name, they're in a relationship. In the comics, uh, they are also in a relationship, and it's Cersei who's plagued with, like, that mental health, like, hallucination thing that Angelina Jolie's character was plagued with. Okay. Um, so he, so Dane Whitman actually helps her through that period. So they in the comics they have a more like intimate relationship as opposed to the movies. Like the movie they can only get like I don't know, like ten minutes of that mm. into the whole like two hours and forty seven seven minutes. Yeah, he sort of he sort of is like the main <laughs> character of the first ten minutes and then he fucks off for the rest of the film and then comes back right at the end. Yeah. I knew Oscar Isaac was in Moon Knight. I forgot about that while we were watching the movie though, and the whole time I was like, I think he's gonna be Moon Knight. Can I say something? I also yeah. thought that. I also forgot that I wasn't going to bring it up, but I I also forgot that we already had confirmation that Oscar because back when they announced Kit Harrington in the MCU, the the thing that was on everyone's mind was like is he going to be Moon Knight? And that like right, he was rumored to be, right? He was, and then they and then they were like and then they finally were like actually it's going to be Oscar Isaac and Kit Harrington's going to be uh uh uh, uh, something else. Yeah, I will say it is very weird that uh, in this movie there's a scene where Jon Snow and uh, Cersei, a character named Cersei, are attacked uh, and they are 
uh, accompanied by their friend named after a soft drink, uh, and they almost die. And who comes to save him? It's oh his God. it's his older brother, Rob, who comes to save him. Right. There's also a scene where they make um, Kit Harrington look into the camera and say, I love you, Cersei, as if they haven't done enough to that man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna have like spill over his character in Game of Thrones. Yeah. 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 I wonder gen- genuinely how much uh Kit Harrington if I, I wonder if Karen Kit Kit Harrington has considered the fact that that line was completely intentional. <laughs> Honestly, I was trying to keep Game of Thrones out of my mind the entire time I was watching the movie. Just I because... couldn't. At, he showed up, I was like, okay, and then his fucking brother is comes to save the day, and I was like, yeah, this is kind of weird, and but also cool. What oh. also is weird, something that we've talked about before, is that they can just talk about DC characters in this movie. Yeah, that was weird. Like, they literally say, I think they say Superman and Batman Super- at some point. Did they say Batman? I yeah, they did. Remember. I I think they did. I know they said Superman, but I, I think there was a there was a there was a reference to a different DC thing as well. Uh, it's just weird. I, I was talking with you about this off off mic. They they do this on uh the CW shows all the time where I'll be watching Arrow and they'll like reference the Hulk and I'm like I don't think so. I don't think I don't think th- you can do that. Right. Like I, I don't know. It's weird that uh, their their universe that has actual DC characters in it also has the MCU. I guess I don't know. It's very weird. It's a very weird choice, and you think it's one that they would actively try to avoid, let alone not even be able to, based on different you know legal things. Right. I just now we've been recording for maybe an hour and a half. Uh, I just noticed that y'all are not in Chris's room. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, it's my room. <laughs> I straight up just like didn't pay attention to that until uh until just now. Not important. Yeah. Just 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 uh you think I you th- you'd think I would have noticed that by now. I I had time to um take all the posters down and repaint Chris's walls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it was. It it's not the curtain with the flowers on it or the fact that none of his posters are there i was looking at the wall i was like it's a different color um (laughs) i gotta talk about my favorite smash brothers character star fox and his in his appearance in this movie oh yeah you guys were freaking like i (laughs) you guys like were freaking out like when i told you it was harry Styles. (laughs) Well, first, yeah, first of all, if we could, yeah, if we could talk about that, I thought it was, hold on, let me get this dude's name, because I thought it was, uh, I thought it was someone else. Uh, it's like Tom Rodster Sanger or something like that, I think that's who you thought it was. Yeah, hold on, uh, I, I know he, it'll be easier if I look up Maze Runner, no, yeah, this person, Thomas Brody Sangster, thought oh. it was him, uh, and I was like, oh, that's neat, and then we're watching the credits and pauline's like oh it's harry styles i was like what that's not an actor (laughs) um but once again marvel tried to shoehorn in another character right at the end that we didn't know anything about but jokes on them this time we knew about him uh for those of you who don't know uh thanos's brother and you explain this to me chris because i didn't actually know this uh thanos is a giant purple abomination and he's actually not supposed to look like that. He's supposed to look like an, a normal human. Uh, so the mm. fact that he's like big and purple is like a uh, like birth defect or whatever. So his brother, Eros, uh, also known as by his superhero name Star Fox, which I can only assume they can't refer to him as uh, in the movie. Um, he he has the power of suggestion. And he uses that. This is not a joke. He uses that in the comic, the comics, to uh, make women orgasm against their will, which uh, becomes an issue when he tries to do it to She Hulk, a superhero lawyer. Um, but yeah, I can only assume that that's not what he's gonna do in the MCU. Because as soon as he was on screen, I I was just like, I never thought I would see this character show up. I was like, there's no way that they can do this, right? Well. He's not going to do a lot 
if he doesn't do that. I mean, maybe it's like a hypnosis kind of thing. Yeah, there, there's definitely going to need to be significant changes to... Uh, assuming he plays a big part in one of the movies coming up, there's going to need to be significant changes to... Uh, maybe not his power set, but definitely his personality. Mm. If uh, if he doesn't play a big part in the MCU at all, then shame on them for that. Th- yeah. There is no, there's, as of right now, like, it's that meme where it's like nobody, and then there's no text, and then it's just a picture of Star, that Star Fox. <laughs> like, no, nobody asked for this. Nobody <laughs> needed him. Right. He didn't have to be here. Yeah, and I think, um, other than the new stuff, obviously, I think that every single after the credits scene has had a payoff or is going to have a payoff because the only one I can think of is at the end of Guardians 2, they tease Adam Warlock and he hasn't been a character yet, but they just announced who's playing Adam Warlock. So uh, clearly he's going to be a character. So I- I'm sure that Star Fox will be... You, you you gotta assume it be in Eternals 2, but I don't even know if Eternals 2 is a thing that's happening. Right. Uh, I don't know if that's been confirmed or not. Um, but, yeah. You, you, you can only assume that uh, he'll show up at some point. You'd think that that character would be a villain. Well, that's... I think even in the comics, that's the whole point, is everybody's like, Thanos' brother? Who could that be like? And it's just this... I feel like he's got a Han Solo vibe to him, except it goes a little too far. Yeah. It's like, I'm a character. I'm also not really on any sides, but I'm also not going to be evil. Right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he won't help fight the next Thanos, but he'll definitely, like, be in support of the next Thanos fight. Right. Instead of a, a big, hairy, like, creature, he has the, the small little dwarf sidekick. That was by Peyton Oswald. That thing was weird. I I don't know. I don't know what I was supposed to feel towards that thing. <laughs> I think we were supposed to feel like there was way too much CGI involved. In yeah. That yeah. The entire thing. I just looked at him and I was like, "That's not from this movie." Right. Yeah. It was so weird because it was like. We need to introduce this new character. I know what we'll do. We'll get a little tiny weird ass halfling gnome person to introduce a character who's essentially a normal human being. Right. <laughs> so we'll we'll show the gnome guy first to ease them into this other character. <laughs> and then the other characters the other characters just like, "Hey, what's up? I'm Thanos' brother." And then he smokes an e-cigarette. They probably have like some sort of connection in the comics. It's just like we haven't read the comics, so I don't know. We're definitely getting to the point, like, they've mainstreamed Marvel stuff as much as they can. We're definitely getting to the point where, you know, comic books just be weird sometimes. Yeah. Right, right. And I I think <laughs> cinematically we're getting to the point where there's going to be a fork in the road and it's like, so do movies just be weird sometimes now mm. too? Or yeah. Do we try smooth over uh, this super weird stuff that happens. Right. Yeah. Well, as far as I can tell, they're still, um, as of right now, they're still going strong basing some stuff off of uh, comic book stuff, like how Hawkeye is based off of Matt Fraction's Hawkeye, like almost to a T. And uh, we are getting a Secret Invasion uh, show. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I, so what do you, uh, what do you guys give Eternals? Are we going by my system? You can, if you want. I was going to give out of 10. Okay. I'm going to give out of five. Yeah. Um, give it a 3.5. Okay. Um, just be so. I kept thinking about this, like when I, ever since we saw it. Like Anthony, you said that Marvel's doing this thing where they they're like exploring different genres. Where um, Shang Chi is the the martial arts movie, and Black Widow is the spy movie. 
yeah. I think this is um, Marvel's attempt at a drama movie. So, and also keeping like keeping that in mind, I, I would give this. I'm gonna do it out of ten. I'm gonna give this a. I'm gonna give this a seven point five. Interesting. I think that's yeah. pretty much exactly where I am too. My my gut reaction was to say eight, but I think eight is too high. Mm-hmm. Um, I think seven point. I think you nailed it. I think I agree with you. I think seven point five is right where where I am with that as well. It was right. it was good, and also got to keep in mind. Um, I've only seen this one once. I probably will only end up seeing this one once while it's in theaters. Um, just because these movies are rapidly releasing. If Spider-Man wasn't like right. a week from now, I would probably go see Eternals a second time. Um, but I'm, I'm so excited. Spider-Man. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. I, I hope it's good. We we talked uh, if you if you want to hear us uh speculate about Spider Man, uh episode one oh one of our podcast. We uh we, we talk about that a lot. Um our, our our regular podcast. Um but no, there's just a lot I think there's a lot riding on this Spider Man movie. I think my enjoyment of it relies on a couple different things. I think that, you know, whatever happens in this movie is going to directly uh, uh, set up what happens in the Doctor Strange movie that I'm also really looking forward to. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Eternals was definitely... They definitely released Eternals now in between Shang-Chi and Spider-Man to just be like, hang tight, we're, we're you know... This is like right. the, the, the filler movie. Which, if I'm being honest, we didn't really need one. There, there was just the the, the timeline yeah, of the. Re- what happened? We got four releases this year. Yeah, just which we didn't. Alone. You know, I know they like doing that, but like we, I would have been cool with three. Like they really jam packed the last couple months, um, and I don't know for Eternals' sake. I don't know if it was a good idea, because I feel like. There's a lot of people, us not included, because we like to see them all, but I feel like there's probably a lot of people who saw Shang-Chi and really liked it, and then they saw the trailer for Spider-Man, and they were like, ah, now I'm excited for that. I'll just skip Eternals, because that's a lot of movies. But then again, like, would you say, like, if Eternals was released after Spider-Man, would that also, wouldn't that also hurt them? Because, like, everybody would be uh, like on the hype train for Spider-Man and they were like, Oh, like the Eternals movie. What, what? Like, I don't care about that. No, I think, I think if they released Shang-Chi when they did, which was September 3rd, I think. And then there was a big, uh, you know, two month break. And then they released Spider-Man December 17th. And then like mid February, they dropped Eternals. I think that would probably be a little better. Cause then you're, cause the gap between, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange is going to be infinitely longer feeling than the gap between Shang-Chi and Spider-Man. So mm-hmm. I right. feel like I feel like that's the gap you want to fill and I I feel like Marvel ha- is hell-bent on doing four movies a year. Uh and yeah. it hasn't hurt them yet. Um but it it feels like if it was going to hurt any movie this year it was going to be Eternals. Because I feel like Eternals is the one that we have the least context for. Similar to Guardians of the Galaxy, I feel like everything should have gotten out of the way of Eternals. That being said, I haven't even seen the Spider-Man movie. And I know that Spider-Man and Shang-Chi are better films than the Eternals movie. So maybe they knew that. Maybe they were like, ah, this one's, you know, as much work as we put into it, it's kind of a weak entry so we'll just put it in there. I don't know. It's 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 interesting that's to think a, about. The bold statement you made about the most hyped movie ever yeah. that could fall flat on its face. Oh no, I know. <laughs> I know. I I I and I have a bad track record of that. I I you can go find it. I'm on record saying that I think Rise of Skywalker is going to be the best Star Wars movie ever made. <laughs> um which it was. Just kidding. It was not. Um, it's worth a watch, but you know. Yeah, I've only seen it once. Really? Yep. 
Interesting. You are like uh, the guy who marathons these movies, and I just assume that through that you would have uh, you would have sat down to watch the second time by now. I have not seen a Star Wars movie since I watched uh, Shit Last Jedi, uh, Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did I mean I want the TV shows are great. Right. Right. But... Did is that. Is that cause and effect? Did you, did did Rise of Skywalker put know. such a bad taste in your mouth? It wasn't intentional, right? But I'm realizing now I have not sat down to watch a full Star Wars movie since. Well, also, actually, this probably plays a factor into it. I feel like uh, more often than not, when you, a person who's seen most of them multiple, multiple times, nowadays sit down to watch them you do it for the benefit of other people who haven't seen it yet and like right. the second that. that rise of skywalker dropped also did covid so there wasn't uh, really yeah. i think yeah. it was like a perfect form of certain reasons so. yeah that's true that yeah. could be the case um cool are there any other uh any other thoughts on the Eternals movie? Um, I just realized that this is the first Marvel Cinematic Universe movie who was directed by a woman. Really? Um, yeah, so I think so. I, I could be wrong, but um, Chloe Zhao is the, is the woman who directed Eternals, and she actually also won, just recently won an Oscar for her other movie, No Man Land. I don't know who's the director for Black Widow, so I could be wrong, but... Um, I don't know if like that is also why this movie seems different from other MCU movies. Uh, I I just looked it up because I was pretty certain. Uh, Captain Marvel was directed by a woman. Oh, I'm sorry. No, um, no, no, you're good. I I feel like 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 going off of what I said before, like this is more of a drama movie. So yes, you have like the fights between like the Eternals and the Deviants, but I also feel like this movie kind of con- concentrated more on like. The relationship between all the Eternals. It's like this whole like big dysfunctional family. Yeah. And you also get like kind of like even though like um Icarus has super Superman powers, but he also has a sweet tooth because he traded a he traded a book for, for some Twinkies on the on the ship. So Right. Like you, you get little new nuances and little like ticks that you don't really see in other MCU movies. Yeah. So I, I kind of I kind of appreciated that. Um, I will say something I wanted to talk about that I totally forgot about until something you just said reminded me. Um, uh, Chris, you and I were talking about the fact that um, this movie takes place over like, what, like five, six thousand years. And um, yeah. when they show the Eternals in like Babylonian time or like biblical oh, times, yeah. they sort of just yeah. like talk like they're from 2021 which is interesting yeah that bothers me like let's ignore the fact that they shouldn't be talking english at all (laughs) but like um yeah it was very like like there was this one scene in particular where uh kumail nanjiani's character kingo was like sitting down and someone's like sat a little close to him and he was like ah come on man there's like so many other seats and i was like this is how people from my from when i'm from talk right yeah, they could have put a little more um, time and care into into that aspect, and I think it would have been a bit better for it. I think it would have been a better introduction to this film had they done something like that. Right. Because I'm watching, and like they're you know, like you said, they're doing the the 2020 humor and speaking English and using phrases that didn't exist for 5,000 years. And I'm just like, all right, I, this is giving me a very, um, low effort vibe. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting vibe to feel in a movie that probably costs millions of dollars to make because right. there's like so much CGI going on. Right. right. Maybe it was like, cause also you're like the, the film was also cramming 5,000 000- years into like two hours so two two hours two and a half hours so i don't know if like maybe that aspect kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit for the sake of the, of the storytelling yeah so. i don't know it, it all they needed to do was have them like 
I didn't need them to to because we're talking about effort levels, right? All I needed them to do was be talking in an ancient <laughs> language rather than American, you know. All, all I, I needed was did, all I needed was them like because you brought up a good point too. Like the English language doesn't exist back then and shouldn't for yeah. a long time. So all I needed was I didn't. I, I think it may, maybe would have even been a little more obvious if they were talking in English but using like, you know, ta- talking like the people of back then. I, I think all I need is them. Like the 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 flashback scenes are completely subtitled and they're not talking in English at all. You know. Yeah. Just to just to just to make me feel more immersed in the like, oh, now we're in this because it was hard at points to be like, what time period are we in now? Even though that it said so on the screen, it was just a little like, wait a minute. So this okay, so this scene is a flashback. It would have been nice if you indicated that in the language, right? The the on screen, yeah. The way that yeah. Yeah, I that that definitely I forgot about that. That's probably part of the reason why I said this one is middle of the road. That definitely wasn't. I I feel like they could have done a little bit more there. Yeah, too. no, for sure. Yeah, totally. Um, I also, is it just me, or does it seem like similar to Will Smith? Does it seem like Angelina Jolie is sort of just done acting? Like she's still appearing in movies, but she's sort of just like there. Um, I this is definitely a better Angelina Jolie performance than I've seen in other films. I'm I'm against getting that error of of actors in the MCU, anyways, because they are at that point where they're like. Well, you know, we were A-listers back in the day, even though, you know, there wasn't as much nuance and our acting didn't have to be great. We were great back then, so we're great now. And it's like, let's get away from that energy yeah. of, of actors I in mean, modern movies. I do appreciate that. Like, when I, was, when I was first watching the trailers, like, I I thought that her character was like, oh, like, she's, like, really overpowered. Like, I don't know, like, how, you know like how her character is going to be in the movie but then she has like that um mental disorder mm. um i can't remember what the name of it is but then it was like okay that's how they're balancing out this character like she's really powerful but yeah then at times like you'll have hallucinations and like that kind of stuff so yeah she had a she she had yeah. like a, a built-in weakness which was pretty cool right. um which is no good on the writer's end right doesn't really play a role in how Angelina Jolie portrayed her. Yeah, I just think that um, it it really seems like they wrote a character around the fact that she didn't want to appear in this movie that much. Mm. Um, right. And when she did, I, I feel like, like what you just said, I feel like we, or maybe the opposite of what you just said, we I feel like we didn't get the best Angelina Jolie performance that we could have and i think it has something to do with the fact that she's been around for a long time like you said she's kind of like the last generation of movie actors and it almost seems like they put her in this movie just to get her name on the poster you know what i mean yeah that's kind of the vibe i was getting like you know this movie didn't need angelina jolie right because then you have characters like Kingo, played by Kamel Nanjiani, who like there was clear intent. They de- they clearly wanted that actor to play that role, and it was great. I think he was the best character, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But then you have characters like uh, Angelina Jolie's character, who's just sort of there, and her right. story is, of course, happening simultaneously with everyone else's story. But I was I found myself less interested in hers because I wasn't completely uh uh convinced by her performance i wonder if um but then again like her character survives the movie and you know now she's off like trying to find other eternals so i don't know if like she would reappear in like eternals too if that ever happens i don't know Um, if if i had money down on it i would i would bet no but who knows maybe because it wouldn't make sense for the story if like all of a sudden she's like just out of there I suppose, like, the, the, there, there are returnals who actually died in the film, so they wouldn't be expected to make 
another appearance. Right. If Angelina Jolie decides, like, okay, I'm I'm done uh, playing Marvel movies, then right. Does that mean? Plus, um. (laughs) The MCU usually has like rock solid contracts. So like if mm. she's if she signed on for three Eternals movies and a TV show, then like there it is, you know. Yeah. Right. What that makes me think, especially because there's so many big actors in this one. Maybe this was a one movie contract, and like if they want to continue with the Eternals, they'll pick and choose who they're gonna get. Yeah. Like, I have a feeling Angelina Jolie did not sign on to be in multiple things. Right. But I feel like some Eternals probably did, or else that would right. be kind yeah. of weird. Like, when Chris Pratt signed on to do Guardians of the Galaxy, did he sign on to be in Infinity War and Endgame? I'm going to bet yes. But I wouldn't be surprised if, like, the next Endgame happens and... Angelina Jolie maybe isn't there, but maybe like Cersei and Kingo are or something, you know? No, that definitely makes sense to me for sure. I guess we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the, the, I've, I've been really, um, the after the credit scenes in phase four have been very interesting because they've, they've, they've towed the line between, what the hell is happening? Why should I care to... Oh, I know exactly what they're teasing. Mm-hmm. Um, And this movie had two, and they were both like... I don't know. It, <laughs> well, yeah. we'll we'll see what why I should be excited about that. I like Harry Styles, sure. but, you know, other, other than that, uh, I'm just like, sure. I'll... I'll, I'll like, because they... Basically, that after the credit scene just said the word... Star Fox, and it's like, what does that mean? Is he going to be the villain of Eternals two? Is he going to be a side character in Thor: Love and Thunder? Like who? Like you know? Is he going to be in the third Spider-Man movie? <laughs> is he going to be? Uh, is there going to be a three-part Star Fox movie series? Probably not. But you know, uh, maybe. <laughs> that's another. That's another example of someone who is like a big star who you'd think wouldn't like a lot there was just a lot of people in this movie who it it seemed like they wouldn't have signed a contract with Marvel because Marvel does the whole like we have you for 18 movies right right, right. which makes me think that they're splitting it up I think like you said I think the actress who played Cersei is probably signed on for more stuff Angelina Jolie is probably done Harry Styles probably Maybe like, is in the air. Yeah. He probably has another appearance that he's expected to do. Right. But he's does other stuff, so he's not going to dedicate his career to being in Marvel films. Right, that's the thing like yeah. you you they got a small TV actor to play Kang the Conqueror in Loki and you know everyone thinks that that character is going to show up all over the place and like Sure, I, I'd, I'd buy into that. I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up all over the place. But Star Fox is played by Harry Styles, yeah. gr- Grammy Grammy Award winning uh, musical artist Harry Styles. So you'd, you'd think that that dude, that person would be um, busy, <laughs> too busy right. to appear in Guardians 3 and, you know, the next Endgame and all this other stuff. So, right. It is interesting. It is it is an interesting I mean it always is with the MCU, but it's it's an interesting wait and see. Very excited for Spider Man. Uh uh a yeah. lot that could happen, a lot that you can only hope happens. Lot um that should. Yeah. Lo- a lot that yeah, I wasn't gonna yeah, a lot that can should I, happen. Have, sorry, can I make a speculation about the, the second post credit scene? Yeah, sure. So obviously I mean spoilers. Um Dane is like about to pick up the black sword right then he right. has a voice i was reading online that it's actually the voice of um i think his name is blade or something like the vampire hunter yeah blade yeah oh really um, i think i i think so and i like from what you guys have told me um the second doctor strange is going to be a horror movie yeah I'm wondering if he's going to make an appearance in that movie and then that's how everything is going to start connecting together. That would be interesting cuz there's there's going to be a Blade uh M, uh Disney Plus show. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
I so is that what you meant? Do you, you the the actor playing Blade is the voice of the Black Sword? No, like the, it's the guy who says like um like he uh, somebody says something, then Dane gets like Dane turns to like the right or something, and then the scene cuts. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's definitely somebody else in the room. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Fuck all about uh, Black Knight. Um, I know a little bit about Blade though. That that'd be cool. I I didn't know. I don't know if Black Knight's like a Blade thing, but like that'd be right. neat. I'm 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 looking forward to uh, Blade because they got a really really cool uh actor to play Blade, who's technically already been in the MCU. But at this point, are those Netflix shows even canon anymore? Like this Daredevil and Jessica Jones and all them, because oh. I feel like they are never talked about and are on not on Disney Plus. So I don't I don't know. Universe. Like if they're if they're gonna if they're going for like the, the multiverse aspect. Plus like I think there was speculation that Daredevil like Charlie Cox's Daredevil was in, gonna be in the 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 new Spider Man movie. Like he's the lawyer who's representing Peter Parker. Right. Or something. I don't know, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what happened? What'd you say? Sorry. Well, Gandalf, he's the other lawyer. Yeah. Gan- Wait, what? Why is Gandalf the... What's up with Gandalf? And so is in, um, Daniel Radcliffe. I think he's playing Harry Potter. Oh, so. oh, I, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and they got Justin Roiland to reprise his role as Rick and... But weirdly, not Morty. They got, uh... Yeah. They got... They, they got the... Chris Pratt to play Morty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris Pratt. Yeah, Chris Pratt... Uh, that's what we forgot to talk about. Chris Pratt voiced every character in Eternals, which is yeah. crazy. The amount that they reuse actors in the MCU, I don't know. <laughs> um, cool. No, I think that'll do it for us here yeah, okay. on Cinematic Relief. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, oh, if you are watching this when it ca- comes out, um... This week was supposed to be a video game podcast. We switched them because we didn't want to just sit on Game Awards news for like a week and a half. So, uh, and plus we, you know, because of a few different things, we we meant to record this episode of this a while ago. Um, But yeah, so enjoy this. Uh, Next week will be a video game podcast. We'll talk about the Game Awards and whatever happens there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, and until next time, I've been Thunder. I'm Lightning. And I'm Monsoon. And we'll see you next time. And everyone point (laughs) at the camera. Yeah. Thank you for listening and watching. And if you like what you see, please be sure to subscribe. Our channel is daily uploads from podcasts to video essays, let's plays to skip. Be sure to find us on Twitch and Patreon. Our theme song is Sunny Day by Froggy and the Friendship. And our let's play intro is Sunny Bit by the same band. Link to all these in the description below. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.